well. And in this place, Father, I pray that we, we would always worship you like this. We would always be praising and loving you, Lord God. We just give this time to you right now, Father, that your Holy Spirit would move in today's sir. <laughs> Whatever you're doing, it, I can't even say sermon right now, but whatever you're doing, Lord, let, we just praise you for it, and we trust you, and we pr thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, good morning again, and welcome, everyone, and welcome to all you out there. I'm glad you can join us all. <clears throat> so, um, yesterday, Pastor Don and I went shopping. Woo! I think we bought out um, the dollar store. <laughs> but um, here's our basket. And, um, <laughs> yeah. and this is what it looks like. So... Um, yeah, just fill up a box. You can bring it in. You can go online. You can donate. Or you can shop online, uh, and you can do it like that. We have plenty of time. We have until the 15th. Is it? Right. I, I know. Well, my paper that I read said 15th to the 22nd. So uh, you still have time to do the boxes. They're in the back. Pick up one if you haven't. And uh, Tuesday, we're coming here. Uh, um, right after I get out of work, I'm just coming here at 3.30. And we have all our bags in the back. And we're going to fill up boxes. We got about five, maybe six boxes. Who knows? Maybe even more. Because uh, we went crazy. <laughs> and I've been to a dollar store I've never been to. And that was huge. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. So, yeah. So, even that, uh, we had a lot of fun. We went out to lunch afterwards, and we had a great time. Amen. Next. So now we have our. Uh, if anybody wants one of these papers, they'll be up here. This is. Uh, disaster relief, and I just seen this today, so <laughs> uh, it's to um, reach out to everybody uh, for the hunger crisis, you know, um, because of COVID. Um, there's a lot of people out here that are very hungry, and uh, they could use support and uh, to help feed everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. I apologize. I haven't read it. <laughs> so, but you come up and you can take a look at it and read it, and they'll be um, up here. Okay. Eighth graders get Oh, okay. Yeah. So, see, yeah. It is, and um, there was a lot of people yesterday came to us, and we told them, we must have told everybody in the store what we were doing, you know, and it kind of is a witness as well that we're here helping people that are hungry, you know, and I don't know if anybody has ever gone without no food and what it's like, but it's... It's rough. It, no, it's, it's not easy. So uh, help in any way you can, if you can. Oh, winter jam. <laughs> when is it? January 22nd. Uh, yeah. Well, it's... Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm sorry. I'm not prepared today. <laughs> January 7th. Great technology. You can look it up. 
They are a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're a lot of fun. Um, I've never been to one here. Yeah. So. Okay. All right. So, um, anybody interested? Yeah. You know, we can try to get together and figure it out. It could be maybe at Bruce Franklin. I don't know, but we'll catch more in July. On so Monday whoever, night. Whoever's interested. Oh. Uh, I gotta work, unless <laughs> unless I take that day off right now. <laughs> so I have to take I have to take Tuesday off because. I've been to one in Colorado, but I've never been to one in Florida, and they are amazing. They are, I mean, the one in Colorado, I mean, my line was far, but you know what? I went, my husband and I, we had a great time, stood in line. We even had fun standing in that line. So if you can come, go. So, all right. And that's it. Oh, um, um, Christmas and Day Anthem by Mike and Christy Taylor. Well, we're going to talk for Christmas, but uh, Bruce, we'll talk about Okay. That. All right. Thank you, guys. Sorry. <laughs> oh, children. Can't forget about the kids. Because they are, just lay your hands and stretch out towards the children. No, can't forget about the kids because they're smarter than us. And um, they can teach us a thing or two, Lord. And they have taught us a thing or two because they are awesome and they're wonderful. And um, they're just a blessing. And it is so wonderful to hear when they come and tell us that somebody accepted Jesus Christ. That's even more, more amazing. Because these children, you know, they're our future. And I know in here they are being raised upright. And I just thank you for the children, Lord. And thank you for the adult children <laughs> that, help, that help us, that help because they need us as well to guide them in the right direction, Lord, and uh, to teach them everything that um, you want them to know, to teach them about the Bible and your word. And they do, Father God, even though they're up and down running around sometimes, they do listen because they come out and tell us what they learned. And I just thank you so much for everything that you have done for us, Lord. And I give you the honor and the glory and the praise in your precious name, Jesus. Amen.
Testing, one, two, testing. One, two, three, four. Hello, there, Hello. I think we got it. Hi. <laughs> Good morning. Uh oh, is it, does it sound right or is it a bunch of noise? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, because if, if this is gonna cause noise, I'd just as soon use the other mic. We all right? All right. Um, I think everybody's back already, right? Well, let's, let's pray. I'm not hearing y'all pray yet. Oh, Father God, we just thank you. We just glorify you and we praise you. Lord God, you alone are worthy of honor and glory and praise. And today we come with expectation, Lord God, to hear what you would say to your church. Father, so often we get caught up with, uh, with the expectations that we have of, of things going the way that we want them to go. Today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we release that right now. We just turn ourselves over and our will over to you, and we ask, Lord God, your will be done. In Jesus' precious name, amen, amen, amen. Hey, look, um, I don't know about you guys, but how many of y'all like to be in control? Okay, guess what? <laughs> Um, I tell you what, uh, just bring up the first slide from my, uh, my PowerPoint. And it, it makes it sound like when I say my PowerPoint, like I've got a message. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. But uh, this isn't the day. That's not it. There we go. I, I want us to take a take a breath. Say to yourself, "It'll be all right." You know, this morning I don't know about how many of you guys started off like this, but this morning uh, I woke up before my alarm went off, and uh, I saw clock said um, thirty. So I, I knew that I needed to, to I, I could lay there another 25, 30 minutes because normally I get up at five. So I laid back down and um, didn't really fall asleep deep, but I woke up and I looked at the clock and it said uh, five, uh, 510. So I jumped up because now I'm feeling like I'm late. I get in, I start to do my devotions, and I look at my, uh, my telephone, and it says 410 or 415. And I'm trying to figure out, okay, what happened? You know? So it's, it's confusing when you start out that way anyway. So I get up early, earlier than I normally get up, because see, one of my things that I do is I seek the Lord for today's message. And I found that I can preach on anything. If you tell, give me a topic, I can preach on anything. And I'm not saying that from an arrogant standpoint. I didn't say I could preach good on it. I just said I could preach on anything. Because the truth is, I've been in the Word. And if you've been in the Word, when you look at the Word, a message comes to your mind. Yes. Or something comes to your mind. So, but the challenge is that that thing that came to your mind isn't necessarily the thing that's in God's mind. And because of that, I, I've gotten to where I'm confident in asking God, what do you want to say? And him giving me the message. But what happened when God's answer is, do you trust me? Because see, I know most of you, like me, have 
ask God for something or about something and hear crickets. Yes. It, when that happens, what do you do? <laughs> so sometimes, sometimes we decide to take things in our own hands. And, and I'm, I know that I'm as guilty as anybody else. Uh, there's this tendency that we do as, uh, as parishioners, as congregants, because I've been in that same position much longer than I've been in the pastoral role. But we have a tendency to think that people who are leading know more than we do. They're better than we are. They are more holy than we are. They are more prepared than we are. Today, that ain't the case. <laughs> we have to decide that anyone and everyone that we encounter are just a different degree and step in their relationship with God. Nobody's got it. Nobody's already gotten there. Nobody is that place where God calls them up and say, hey, son, what do you think you're going to do today? Right. You know, he, he doesn't do that. Amen. You know, we are just learning. We are disciples. Disciples mean student. Yes. We are followers. Yes. We are not the leader. God is. And I'm saying this to you so you can understand where I'm at today. How many of y'all wake up in the morning and say, I want to be a, ser a sermon illustration? <laughs> you know, it could be one of those il illustrations that don't let this happen to you. I don't necessarily want to be a sermon illustration, but I'm finding myself being one, especially today. So because of that, there's a song that I want uh, asked um, asked Miss Lorraine to play, and I want us to start out with communion because I want to be in the right place. So if you've got the communion elements, go ahead and uh, and prepare yourself. Uh, and before doing communion, I always remind people. See, people don't always understand what this is about. Some people think of, uh, of communion as this sacred religious thing that is spiritual. And we don't get it. But I, I want you to understand, this is a sermon illustration. See, th this is what Jesus used it as. He used it as a sermon illustration. He said, that this is the cup of the new covenant. It represents his blood that was poured out for all of the world. And the idea is for whosoever. Whosoever would receive it is welcome to it. Whosoever. And then he took the bread and said, this is a sermon illustration. This is representative of the body that was broken for you, my body. And he said, do this in remembrance of me. That was the idea behind the, the cup and the bread. It's a sermon illustration. Jesus is saying, this is a reminder. This is a tool so that you understand who I am, what I have done for you, and who you are. Amen. There's only one Stipulation that I've found in scripture that tells us how or whether we should drink of this cup and eat of this bread. And it says, it says, if you can recognize it as being representative of Christ, not whether you have uh, perfect attendance, whether you have perfect performance, whether you have uh, you are without sin, whether you even have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. None of these things is, is, the, uh, is identified there. 
If you recognize this as, res, as representing the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that's the requirement. And if you can't recognize this as representing the body and blood of Jesus Christ, then I would suggest you don't take it. Other than that, it's the only challenge. Because Jesus wants you to know that it's his table and you are welcome. He wants you to know him. He wants you to experience him. He wants you to enjoy his presence. So uh, I'm going to have uh, Miss Lorraine play a song, and then we'll take communion. But I wanted us to be in the place so that the Spirit of God can speak because right now I need to hear him. Yes. Amen. Amen.
bless you, Lord. This morning, as I was preparing or thought I was preparing for the message, I sat before the Lord early this morning, and this is part of the conversation that I had with him. I said, Lord, what would you like to say to your church today? And the Lord said, you can uh, fast forward through next slide, I think, and bring you to where I'm at right now. The Lord said, I am peace, I am love, I am joy, I am here. Embrace my love, you are mine, the work of my hands, the joy of my heart. And I said to him, yes, Lord, thank you, Lord. Lord, is there anything else you would like to say? Is there a verse or a thought you would like us to focus on? For the next few minutes, it was silent. Lord, I am not hearing you. Jesus, hold me in your arms and speak to me, Lord. I wait for the next hour and don't hear anything from the Lord. Lord, I don't want to speak a word this day to your children without a clear message from you for this day. A right now word that will change lives and bring glory and honor to your great name. And the Lord said... Stop worrying, Billy. I am with you. Trust me. Lord, do you want me to go out without notes and unprepared? <laughs> and all I got was, do you trust me? Yes, Lord. I wanted to say but. <laughs> I just don't want to get in the way, but I will trust you. Y'all ever been in that kind of situation? Okay. I want you to know something, first of all, because this is the thing that resonates in my spirit. Just because God doesn't answer your question the way you want it answered doesn't mean that he's not answering your question Amen. it doesn't mean that he's mad at you because see that was my default yeah. that was always my default if he didn't answer my question the way that I wanted him to answer it's got to be because of sin in my life it's got to be because I'm not worthy it's got to be because of you fill in the blank because I watched the wrong thing, said the wrong thing, did the wrong thing I wasn't obedient, I'm not a good enough son any of those things is always my default. And it has been my default for 50 years. 55 years, probably. Only recently have I learned that that has nothing to do with whether or not God loves you and will answer you and whether or not he wants fellowship with you. Amen. Only recently. But that's been my default. So when I don't hear him, I think it's because of me. Now, there's probably good spiritual reasons why uh, God doesn't answer your prayers. And there are many scriptures that talk about things that can hinder your prayers. One of the things that it talks about hindering your prayers is your relationship with your wife. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? 
Your relationship with your spouse can hinder your prayers. So if that's not the problem, maybe there's something else going on. <laughs> now you're causing problems. <laughs> See, I, I'm, I, I'm starting to realize that we have a tendency to want to be in control. And that's the thing that is before me. I want to be in control. You know, a, a couple of things immediately came to my mind when I realized that he wasn't giving me a message, that he was telling me to wait, to trust him. And it may be that that's the message that he was giving me, but I couldn't understand that he was giving me the message. But there is a scripture when Jesus is preparing the disciples for what's to come, he lets them know that you will be carried before governors and kings. And the, the word of the Lord is that at that time, don't prepare yourself for what you're going to say because the Spirit of God will give you the words to say at that moment. You know, and as I, I think of that, one of the things that comes to my mind is that's so that you don't get in the way. Because, see, logically, you can come up with an argument for everything. Give yourself enough time. You can come up with a logical argument, but it might not be God's argument. So today, maybe it's not my argument that you needed to hear or my apology or apologetics that you need to hear or my position of theology that you need to hear. Maybe you just need to listen for what God has to say. Because so often, we just want to fill in the gap. In uh, Mark chapter 9, <clears throat> you find an interesting scenario, an interesting story. Uh, Jesus has taken three of the disciples up to a mountain. And as the disciples are in his company, all of a sudden Jesus is transfigured. And it says that the, his garments were whiter, became whiter than any launderer could make it. And there before the disciples in the presence of the Lord in his glorified form is Moses and Elijah. Peter pillar of the church the one that Jesus said upon you upon this I'll build my church he got quiet things are going on that he didn't understand so what does he do oh it's good Lord that we're here <laughs> fill in the gap you know, when it gets silent, that's when we decide it's time to talk. Where it was a time to be quiet before the Lord, all of a sudden, Peter fills in that place from the abundance of what's inside of him. Oh, Lord, let us make booths for you and Elijah and Moses. But what if God's saying, just be quiet? And I find this to be one of the most gentle rebukes from the Lord that I, from, from God the Father that is recorded in Scripture. Peter's talking. God the Father says, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased hear him now that word here that word here is the same word in the Greek that's translated in the Shema hear O Israel the Lord our God the Lord is one 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. That word here, it's an imperative word. It means pay attention to, adhere to. It's a command word. Listen and do kind of word. It's the same exact word that's translated when uh, Moses said, and there'll be a prophet like me raised up, and you'll hear him. That wasn't a suggestion. That's who we were referring to. But Peter, trying to fill the silence, wanted to talk. How many times have we done that? What if God just wants us to hear the silence? What if God just wants you to be in his presence? What if today's message isn't about what you will hear, but what you don't hear? Sometimes I feel like the, the dancing bear. You know, I'm just trained. I get up and dance. But what if God's not looking for a dancing bear? He's looking for somebody to silently model a principle before your eyes. He doesn't have to answer your question. Sometimes he just wants to know whether you'll just listen to him. Father, I live, listen to you. I'll be still before you. I'll be quiet before you. I give you permission to fill this time with your spirit, not with my words. You're welcome in this place. The Lord says he's not angry with you. That he loves you. He says, I am peace. I am love. I am joy. I am here. Embrace my love. You are mine. The work of my hands and the joy of my heart. I just want to spend time with you. I want to hold you in my arms. I want you to know me as Father. My heart breaks when your heart breaks.
trust me. It's okay. I will not leave you or forsake you. Even in the silence, I'm with you. Lord Father God, we just glorify your name and we praise you. We thank you, Lord God, for your love, for your compassion, for the peace that happens when we stand before your throne, where we quietly wait patiently for you. We bless you. I won't add anything more to what the Lord has spoken. I would encourage you just to sit in quiet. And if the Lord speaks something else to you, so be it. Amen. And if he does speak to you, write it down. Because if he's talking, it's worth hearing and writing down. Amen.